Welcome to Impact OC, the only program showcasing the people and organizations shaping Orange County. With your host, Don Camber. Hello, I'm OC Talk Radio Public Affairs Director Don Camber with another great guest impacting our community in a positive way. Today, I welcome Salvation Army Orange County Captain Nissan Kisten. Thank you for being on Impact OC, Captain Kisten. Well, Dawn, it's a privilege to be with you today. It's fantastic to share this platform with you. Well, the the Salvation Army is known for its red kettle drives. How are you handling it in this COVID awareness environment? That's a great question. Obviously, our red kettles are iconic to who we are as an organization for over 130 plus years. So during COVID, we've had to really do multiple things. And one is uh, we have launched our digital kettle. You know, this digital platform has been here for a long time now, and our young kids are digital natives. So we're using the digital kettles as a way to engage our community to help us support those most needy American families this Christmas and Thanksgiving. So how is that going to operate? So basically what we will do is we're using uh, pl social media platforms like Facebook, where we'll have a digital kettle set up. So we've, the Salvation Army has a digital kettle uh, on its Orange County Salvation Army uh, Facebook page. We also have one on our LinkedIn page. And then we also have individuals. You know, we have board members, advisory board members, employees, uh, friends of the Salvation Army who have set up a digital kettle, whether it's on their Facebook page, LinkedIn page, or some form of their social media. And friends of the Salvation Army, you can support us by clicking onto those digital kettle pages. So for instance, mine, uh, Captain Nurse and Kirsten, I have a digital Facebook page uh, for my red kettle. And so if you can click onto my, red, my Facebook page and my red kettle, and you can see and have opportunity to engage with us and still make your valuable partnership with us. Does that mean there will be no red kettles anywhere outside? No, that does not mean that. We will still have our red kettles in certain locations. Uh, obviously, uh, COVID has limited how many kettles we can have because not all of our stores or usual partners are being able to operate in their usual ways. So, yes, we are having to uh, basically diversify our efforts. Yes, there will be a few red kettles at Walmart, uh, and a few other well-known stores, but by and hold, the vast majority of our effort will be a digital one. So let us know a little bit more about the Salvation Army. Who are you? Well, that's a great question too. The Salvation Army started with William and Catherine Booth more than 130 plus years ago in the East End of London. William and Catherine Booth recognized that they were needy people around them in East End of London, and that the established churches weren't doing enough to support them. William, an established um, Methodist minister himself, said, this can't be acceptable. Uh, Christianity is about helping people, but more than just speaking at them, it's about how keep putting uh, soup in their bodies, giving them soup and soap and salvation. And really, we are a holistic movement and the Salvation Army has traditionally saw it itself as being an organization that loves people's heart and soul, but also is very much concerned about their personal welfare. And so the Salvation Army, for more than 130 years, has seen itself uh, not just preaching a message, the gospel message, but also practically supporting people in the point of their greatest need and crisis. So is there any requirements to be a member of the Salvation Army? Oh, no, definitely not. The Salvation Army helps all people, irrespective of their religion, culture, uh, race, ethnicity. Uh, we, we, we are a movement that does not discriminate. Uh, in fact, we embrace all people. In fact, William Booth said the Salvation Army is for all people of all nations, hence why the Salvation Army today exists in more than 134 nations across the world. And the Red Kettle Drives help your programs. Explain some of the programs that the funds help. The Salvation Army's Red Kettle Program brings uh, great support in providing food. 
in Orange County itself, one in four people live with food insecurities. To me, that is just such a challenging situation. So our red kettles provide food on the plates of many, many thousands of American families here in Orange County. We also recognize that the growing demand and need in terms of homelessness, which is now a national epidemic. So once again, uh, financial support from Red Kittles helps people who are homeless with, with a safe place to rest their heads at night. We also see that our children and our young people need support and nurturing and encouragement. And that is Red Kittles help us with our youth and children's programs across the county, as well as most importantly, a drug and alcohol rehabilitation programs where so many people have recognized as the Salvation Army has uh, throughout the history of its time served people who are facing uh, their lowest point of time. And so drug and alcohol rehabilitation is also a pillar, a rock bed of what we do. And is the Red Kettle Drive one of the major fundraisers in order to support these programs? It is a critical component of our fundraising efforts, and it is a critical way in which we can communicate our message to the American people, let them know that the Salvation Army uh, is out there doing the work that it does. Uh, and yes, it is vital for us this, this holiday season, for our red kettles, not to take a backward stand. And unfortunately, COVID has really challenged our efforts. And so we yes. desperately need uh, Orange County residents and supporters to get behind our Red Kettle campaign. So besides the Red Kettle campaign, are there other ways people can help you? They can. Uh, we, we definitely have, uh, we have some capital ca campaigns are happening. We have many ways in which people can, our website, our Facebook page, uh, our LinkedIn pages are also ways. They can also write a check to the Salvation Army Orange County. And if they write a check to the Salvation Army Orange County and send it to our head office at 10 200 Pioneer Road, uh, Tustin, uh, we can uh, use those funds to help needy Americans as well. And I understand during COVID, the need is very high. You know, well, more and more Americans uh, are either laid off they, from work and find themselves in a predicament that they never ever anticipated. So unemployment rates are really skyrocketing. And we're finding that there are good families, genuine families that would have never asked or needed the help of the Salvation Army that are knocking on our door today. With Disneyland, a major employment source in Orange County, and we're seeing literally thousands of employees from that great organization seeking the help of the Salvation Army in this holiday season. You know, this is supposed to be a time of joy and, and goodwill and peace to all men. But what we're seeing is good people are struggling, struggling just to do the simple things that they've always done. And so that creates incredible uh, emotional and physical turmoil and trauma to families. And so, yeah, we're finding our needs have exponentially gone up. We're, you know, there's always going to be your needy. There's always going to be your homeless. There's always going to be your vulnerable. But at this time of the year with COVID, with people losing employment, we're finding that we're facing demands for our services and our resources greater than ever, ever before. Can people donate goods? I remember once upon a time I was able to drive somewhere and drop off some of my donated clothing that I no longer needed. Yeah, that, those opportunities still exist, Dawn, and we, we, we definitely uh, appreciate people wanting to drop clothing, uh, um, sometimes furniture, and many, many other, uh, and sometimes even people dropping off food which we generally appreciate. But with COVID, those challenges have made even those types of gifts and donations a little bit more complex because now those things that we once used to be able to do, we can't do as easily. We, so our preference at this stage is for people to make cash donations at, if at all possible. Uh, if they still feel that that uh, bringing clothing and furniture is all that they can do, well, we'll accept it. But now with cleaning measures that we need to put in, now with the whole process of protecting our staff that sort through those clothing, that just makes an, another layer of challenge and cost to us organizationally. So what about people who want to get help from the Salvation Army? What should they do? Well, uh, once again, they can uh, call our office directly. They can uh, email us. They can even just drop by. Uh, we have a lot of people calling. In fact, there are many, many ways you can reach us. 
Uh, we're all on Facebook. We're on uh, uh, we're on all the social media platforms. Uh, the Salvation Army Orange County website page and Facebook page is available for all of us for them to connect with us. Uh, they can ask a family member if they feel somewhat conscientious about uh, asking help for the Salvation Army. Uh, they can ask a friend to ring us or, or email us or text us or face messenger us. There are many ways in which they can connect with us. And understand you also have emergency disaster services. Explain those. So you know that, uh, like all countries in the world, uh, there's going to be times where there's a flood or a hurricane or bush fire, wildfires, as we've had in California in recent days. Uh, and even in Orange County at the Silverado wildfires. And we saw a lot of families in the Irvine area displaced. Uh, our National Emergency Disaster Program is where we are right on, the, on, on hand to provide refreshments and even help families relocate during those times. So our National Emergency Disaster Relief Program is well-renowned globally, internationally, and yeah, even in Orange County, we have uh, our first responders that will respond to help our first responders, uh, police, fire, ambulance, with their efforts by providing them necessary refreshments while they serve and as they fight fires and et cetera. Do you work with other organizations to provide some of the same services? We do collaborate. You know, we've recognized, and I think we all recognize that the challenges facing us is too big and too great for one entity to manage it all. So yes, we work with the Red Cross. We work with, uh, yeah, in Orange County, we work with many of our partner agencies, uh, whether it's mental health would be well OC or whether it's uh, with uh, any of our partner organizations, uh, because together we're stronger and together we can make the biggest difference for families. And yes, so yes, you, to answer your question, collaboration is very critical for what we do. And you also have adult rehabilitation programs. We do, which are, are, is our drug and alcohol rehabilitation program. Uh, and we have that facility here at Anaheim on Lewis Street, uh, where we uh, provide support for 175 people for a six month program. And in that six month program, we help people uh, rehabilitate their lives, find hope again, um, and uh, both men and women. There's no cost to the individuals who sign up for our program. Uh, we're probably one of the few uh, programs, drug and alcohol rehabilitation program that is free of charge uh, because we realize that uh, the burden for people finding help is already hard enough. So by lowering the barriers and removing the hindrances for them to get help, uh, because you know often these families and these individuals that arrive on our door broken and hurting, it's not just them, it's their entire family that's also being hurt, hurting and broken as a result of their addiction issues. And you also have homeless outreach and shelters. We do. And uh, at the moment, we have our Center of Hope, which is probably one of our largest efforts uh, year that is based in Anaheim. It's a seven acre block of land where we're building uh, permanent supportive housing. Uh, we also currently have 325 low barrier shelter beds. And that's where we say we triage people, where we see chronic homeless people right off the streets and where we give them a bed to rest their heads. We give them stable nutrition, which helps with their mental health. We help them uh, uh, access clean showers and so forth so that they can begin to rebuild what was broken. Uh, and you know what, our, our team are doing an amazing job as we service so many uh, needy families who are homeless. But what we also want to remind our friends who are listening to us today on your program, Dawn, we're not just about giving people a shelter bed. We're actually about giving them the tools to deal with the most deep and hurting challenges they face. That's what makes the Salvation Army uh, unique compared to a number of other providers. We actually don't just want to give people the Band-Aid to their problems. We want to give them a full comprehensive opportunity to deal with every aspect of their lives. So uh, if you come into our low barrier shelter, uh, we will uh, allow you to access uh, a case manager. We will also then after a period of time when you're ready to move to the next step, we'll put you in touch with a case or a housing navigator uh, with a drug and alcohol counselor with someone who can help you access mental health support. 
we provide all of the different aspects to helping people be whole again and find hope. So what are the requirements? Many times they have to come to your office and they have to fill out a lot of information. What kind of information are you going to seek from them? Well, uh, we obviously uh, respect the HIPAA laws and so that we uh, are not actually making people. We Basically, there is some information, of course, we need to take. We need to take down your name. We need to take down some details. We also need to actually understand your history of trauma. Uh, we want to help people. And so in all, order to help people, we want to make it at all possible to remove as many barriers as possible to help them. But there are some things we've got to do together in partnership with the individuals to best help them. Now, we recognize that people sometimes need to build trust, and that takes time. And so we are very much uh, aware of those needs uh, for trust building. So we take people uh, on a journey. We don't force people to disclose everything and tell us everything. We recognize that some people find that really difficult and hard, uh, but we need to also secure the safety and security of those residents that we do have. And so there's sometimes we're going to require some information from individuals to ensure that we do not put them or others at risk. And so we take enough information to make everyone safe and healthy in, in our facilities. So explain to us how you will help a family who suddenly finds themselves homeless. Well, that's uh, so what we will do is we either they are referred through CityNet or through another government agency or organizations. We will bring them into our facility. We'll ensure that they first initially uh, uh, are going through a screening process where we work out who they are, what, the, what, what seems to be their issues and what are the core challenges they're facing. And so one of our caseworkers will sit down with them in the first instance and do an assessment. Uh, and we use uh, the Poverty Stoplight Assessment Tools, which is in partnership with UCI and Poverty Stoplight, which is a great way to help people case manage their own issues and challenges. Because you know what? We don't want to give people the cookie cutter answers or, 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 or response. We want to actually give people ownership and empower them to take control of their own recovery and their own health and well-being. And so the poverty stoplight process is the first step in assessing who they are. So they can design their own case management strategy. And when they design their case management strategy, where they do three things, they work out areas which are incredibly weak in their, in their challenge. So for instance, say they don't have a bank account or they don't have a driver's license or they don't have their social security number or they've lost all of their identifications. Those are some of the things we will put down as first initial steps. Then the second step may be say, well, you know what? These are the areas of caution. Uh, I have bad oral hygiene, my teeth are in terrible state and I need to see a, a dentist or my eyesight is terrible and I, I struggle to see. And so that's causing me other challenges. And we will actually help them identify those needs and say, well, we need to create a pathway. Or there may be areas where they're really strong. Maybe they have a skill or they had previous employment in a certain area or gr had a trade. And so we'll help them say, well, that's a strength. So we'll design a plan based on their strengths, weaknesses, and areas of caution. And those three poverty stoplights help us help people help themselves. Because really, you can, you, can you can give a man a fish or you can teach them to fish. We'd rather teach people to fish so that they become self-reliant and self-empowered. So you have partners with health facilities? We do. Uh, we partner with a number of organizations who come. We have a mobile clinic that comes to our facilities, providing health care, health support with doctors on board. We have a dentist uh, that comes on site and helps with dentistry issues. We have uh, optical to help people with uh, lenses and glasses and so forth. Uh, we have a number of service providers, which we partner with, that provide the essential services to help people move forward. Do you anticipate the need being even bigger because of COVID? Well, yes, initially, but you know what? COVID's not going to be with us forever. Uh, we, are, we are hopeful. Uh, we're positive. We're optimistic that uh, the future is always brighter. But I think in these initial phases, there's going to be, be uh, some uh, major challenges facing all of us. And so we're bracing for it. Uh, we're fortunate that there are good people out there that want to support us. And I believe your listeners are some of those good people. But yes, to be honest, let's not be naive. Uh, the next three months, 
to four months are going to be the most challenging uh, for all Americans across our nation because COVID has brought a unique set of challenges, challenges we never anticipated before. But we've got to pivot there and adapt and be change agile to respond to the needs so that we can help people move forward. Do you need more volunteers? We always need volunteers. We're a volunteer army. So yes, uh, we have a volunteer coordinator. You can, once again, when you j j jump onto our digital platforms, uh, you can see there's an opportunity for you to volunteer with the Salvation Army. And it will give you an initial automated response. And then someone from my team will follow you up and, and either email you or call you uh, and give you details of how you can best volunteer and work with us in helping others. What are some of the opportunities? Well, uh, the opportunities are, for instance, delivering food, sorting out clothing. Uh, the opportunities are helping in our Christmas preparation, our Thanksgiving preparations, so that we can make sure that everyone has a happy Thanksgiving and uh, a happy and uh, joyous uh, Christmas and New Year. And I understand you have what we call a Center of Hope campaign drive. Yes. So the Center of Hope is really the iconic uh, foundation stone of what we're trying to do. And really at the moment, we have a capital campaign to raise more than $20 million, which will allow us to put all those wraparound services that I just mentioned on one side. Instead of having those mobile clinics come in and out, we want to house them on a facility where we can have those responses and those issues met 24 seven. Because unfortunately the needs of our people in our county are so great. Those mobile clinics are only able to see so many people per day and they're only able to come in once or twice a week maybe. But to have those facilities available 24 seven, to have a pet care facility so, so that people who are homeless don't see the barriers to engage with us for us to have medical, dental, optical, all on one side, for us to be able to respond to those needs, well, we need a facility able to do that. So we would see the sin of hope having three elements, a low barrier shelter, where we can triage people with their initial needs. Then we can have permanent supportive housing and affordable housing. And then thirdly, we also have our drug and alcohol rehabilitation facility. To have all of those things on one side with medical, dental, optical, it just allows us to transition people from suffering to hope in the most expedient and effective way. So our center of hope is really an important catalyst to bring change. That's why we have created a very new and innovative way to deal with homelessness called our homeless throughput system. It's innovative because it's not about just providing shelter. We don't have a homeless problem we have a homeless throughput problem. We need to get people from homelessness to hope in the most, far, most expedient manner. And that's the challenge we face across our nation right now. We have homeless, we'll always have homeless, but we don't have a system to take people from homelessness to hope. Yet here in Orange County Salvation Army, our homeless throughput system is a channel to take people on that journey in an effective way and it's working. We're seeing incredible results. We're seeing people. I saw a lady just the other day. Can I share with you this, with your sure story? I, I saw Maria the other day. And when I looked at Maria uh, just recently again, the lady that I met the first day she walked into our shelter, I could not recognize. She looked totally transformed. Her hair was done. She had a little bit of makeup on. Oh my goodness. I go, who is this lady? And she smiled at me. And that was the first time she smiled. And you know what? That's the challenge we face. We see so many people on the streets. You know, they look terrible and people think and, the, and we basically label them. I believe we need to remove the labels. People were not made for labels. We call people they're homeless or they're a drug addict or they're a mental health issue, a patient. People were made for labels. Everyone has a name. We need to help people find their name again. Someone gave them an identity. We need to help them find their identity again. We need to help them find their hope. And when I saw Maria and I saw her smile, and I said, that's what we are gifted to do. That's what makes the Salvation Army the Salvation Army. It's helping people find hope again. 
And when do you think this building will be built? I know that it takes a lot of time to raise the money. Well, we're one on, we are well and truly on our way. We've raised significant amounts of money. We already have the 325 bed facility in our partnership with the city of Anaheim. That facility is already up and running. The permanent support of housing, we're hoping to break ground in October, 2021. The wraparound services, we're, we're just about halfway through with our capital campaign. We need another $12 million to get us across the line. I'm hoping that there will be many, many generous Orange County friends Fuck. that can partner with us. Because you know what? I think if we can start to begin to resolve some of these enormous challenges, I think we as a county will be stronger, more vibrant, and more effective going forward. And of course, a big way to help is the Red Kettle Drive, which you explained at the beginning that will be done virtually. Why don't you go over that again? Well, the Red Kettle Drive, Dawn, I'm thankful for your, your question. You can connect with us and donate on our rare virtual red kettle, our digital virtual red kettle, like jumping on our Facebook page, Orange County Salvation Army, or on our LinkedIn page, the same Orange County Salvation Army. And you can give to us today. We need your support and we need your partnership. So jump on our social media. Don't forget the Salvation Army, Orange County, whether it's our Facebook, our LinkedIn page, or you can join mine because I've set myself a challenge to Dawn of raising $5,000 to help needy uh, Orange County uh, residents this year. Or you can say, you know what? I've got a lot of good friends and I've got a great network. Why don't I become, have my host my own digital red kettle? And we would love to help you do that as well. Because you know, the greatest gift you can give someone this Christmas is giving them hope and we need to help you to help us give someone hope is having the virtual red kettle drives akin to having food drives it is it's it's very similar it's a simple principle um you know the food drive principle is about saying you know what i'm gonna allow people to come in and donate food uh, but you know do, doing this digitally now with everyone doing their shopping online people are actually using the, the digital platform far more than they've ever have before. My children are te still teaching me how to use Facebook and I'm learning how to use Instagram at the moment, Dawn. <laughs> but you know, uh, our kids have been doing this for a long time and I think we are starting to do this more and more. So uh, those baby boomers that are always on Facebook at the moment, because we know that baby boomers are using Facebook more than any other platform at this current point of time, we need you to start to use your network and, and get on board and help us on, with our digital Red Shield Kettle campaign. Thank you, Salvation Army Orange County Captain Nissan Kirsten for being on Impact OC. And I thank everyone for tuning in. I'm OC Talk Radio Public Affairs Director Don Camber. Have an impactful day. You've been listening to Impact OC the only program showcasing the people and organizations shaping our community. Right here on Orange County's only community radio station, OC Talk Radio.